It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I thought it'd be fun uh, for you and for me if before we started this this turn, we just went through the economic phase sequence off camera, as I usually do, I would talk about um, everyone's kind of strategic goals for the turn, um, just so we can kind of compare with what their goals are after it's all said and done. So you can keep these goals in mind as the play commences to see what happens. So we'll start with Junior, because Junior's going to be going first. Um, Junior's main goal is to get rid of this raider group that's back in his lines, causing him trouble. He has the practice fleet uh, chasing it. He has another fleet coming this way. And he also wants to continue exploring, I believe. Um, <clears throat> all the while kind of securing his borders, keeping his other colonies safe, namely mostly here from whatever Betty Crocker might be sending at him. Betty Crocker has a ship here, some ships here, which don't really worry him too much, but there is a lot of them. There's nine. I guess that's not a ton, but it's it's a good amount. They're weaker ships, though. Uh, so that's what he's trying to do. Betty Crocker, for his part, he wants to secure both of these colonies, have enough of a force to um, try and defend against the Doomsday Machine if he needs to, and also send set up something that he's trying to do to Sonny. Uh, which probably won't, if, if he gets it set up right, it probably won't happen until the next round of turns after the next economic phase sequence. Sonny, for his part, he wants to get rid of the blue that's in his area and maybe also counter-strike against Betty Crocker. He didn't have a ton of money, but he did have enough to get a Titan with a couple fighters on board. So he feels like that's a pretty good attack fleet. And since he has these minesweepers also with it, he thinks he can. he's going to be safer from losing his titan <laughs> to a bunch of mines. Um, so that's what's going on. Junior's first. We'll see what he does. Given his goals, Junior had a pretty easy decision. He's brought in most of the Praxis fleet here to trap the raiders. The raiders can't run away because there's nowhere, no valid spot for them to retreat to. Uh, that could be different because they're raiders, but generally they can only retreat to a, a place devoid of enemies and um, that's been exposed explored so we can't retreat this way which is kind of where it would normally have to go um i guess i'll check real quick to see if maybe they can retreat to somewhere with enemies because they have cloaking um these destroyers aren't able to they don't have the right scan level to deal with them though there are destroyers i think here that do they just haven't made it there yet no here and the Praxis fleet made short work of the raiders without so much as a scratch on themselves. They got scratched once, but that immediately gets healed. And so, great job, Junior. You already met your goal, your big part of your goal. Now you just have to maintain the colony integrity uh, for the rest of the, the round of turns. Now let's see what Betty Crocker has in store. All right, here's the situation as we go into our second round of turns. Uh, the Bringers of Pain came down here minus one sweeper which he sent up here to act as kind of a scout for this frontier fleet that's coming his way. Uh, that's going to bother Betty Crocker. He was hoping to be able to get up to here uh, with unmolested, but with these black holes and everything, that's a little too difficult to do. Um, Betty Crocker on his turn had sent one of the raiders to get rid of the MS pipeline over here. The other two that were here got to escape because Sonny doesn't have scanning two yet. He, he just didn't have the resources to research that. Junior did. Um, and so that's where things sit. There's, we're kind of seeing a familiar situation where the blue is just kind of splitting up, um, but Betty Crocker kind of has a larger plan going. We'll see if he can get it to work or not. He's going to have to con contend with this. This really puts a, a, a thorn in his side. Let's, let's see where our doomsday machine goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or ten will re-roll. Doom. After his legendary Raider Fleet 5 got rid of all of the aliens on Romulus, uh, well, actually, before they did that, uh, because of how the, the uh, turn sequence goes, um, Betty Crocker did some dancing with his pieces. He sent uh, six destroyers to take out that minesweeper. They were successful. Um, then Sonny tried to kind of counterattack a little bit, uh, attack the raider that was here. The raider retreated, so not a lot he can do about that. 
Um, he also retreated the Raiders here, so Sonny just brought his Bringers of Pain back to kind of this point position so that they can try to respond to anything, at least among these three. He kind of needs one of those for <laughs> each of his areas. The Bringers of Fear are kind of that for here um, because there's reaction movement, so if either colony gets attacked, they can move. But unfortunately, um, he doesn't have one for up here, and there is this destroyer there. Let's do Doom. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Do oh, actually, no. I should have thought about that, but I didn't. This is not going to go randomly. It's going to go here and destroy the scout. Well, the scout gets to fight, actually. So Doomsday Machine gets to attack twice. It's a defensive one. I forget what its attack is. It's like crazy. Um, yeah, that would be enough. And the scout is gone. I think the minerals stay there, though. So that's that's nice. I, I want to amend that to say I meant to do that because that's pretty good for Junior. He lost a scout, but that's going to put the Doomsday Machine uh, in spitting distance of Romulus. So it's going to come here next and attack the, the legendary raiders. That should be a good fight. Um... They have a good shot of it, but we'll see what happens. That'll happen at the end of this round of turns. Okay, we can see a mess of maneuvering here. Another Minesweeper comes this way. Um, Betty Crocker moves some forces around this way. Uh, leaves the Raider there. Uh, Sunny puts a Dreadnought there, but moves the rest of the Bringers of Fear this way. Um, feels like they're close to all the different colonies there to help move towards the Frontier Fleet. Uh, it's eventual target. Um, of course, they could also be coming in the back door here, uh, but then he can still bring them down, he hopes. Bringers of Pain still here, and that's about it for all of that stuff. Um, so now, time for the legendary Raider Group 5 versus the Doomsday Machine. Uh, they all get to fire first, and they have an, an attack strength of seven, eight, versus the Doomsday Machine's defense of two, but a whole strength of three, so they need three hits. Six or better, they get five shots. One, two, three, four. four. The fourth shot did it, the Doomsday Machine is destroyed and the legendary raiders have another victory uh, in their belt. But they don't get to go up any more levels. You can't get any better than legendary. Legendary is the best you can get. Turn order die roll for the coming round. This is an important die roll. Uh, this is an important round of turns. And as such, I have three colors here in my hand, and we're gonna roll all three at once. And I'll tell you which color corresponds to which player. The black corresponds to Betty Crocker. The blue corresponds to Sonny. And the orange corresponds to Junior. Here we go. Highest goes first. Second highest goes second. Third highest goes last. So it looks like Sonny, Betty Crocker, then Junior. As he brings in his bringers of sorrow, armed with five minesweepers. He sends another minesweeper over here. This is Sonny, that, that's the he I'm talking about. He also chased off this raider with his dreadnought there. Bringers of Sorrow, Titan, two fighters, and five minesweepers ch chasing after the frontier fleet. Trying to kind of push everyone away um, while still uh, remaining cognizant of these warp point accesses. Accesses. So the Bringers of Pain remain there, um, and now it's going to be Betty Crocker's turn to respond. Junior finds himself in a bit of a pickle. The legendary Raider Group 5 is starting to press into closer to his home world. If he loses that, he loses the game. Um, but the problem is, is his strongest fleet, which is the Fra Praxis fleet, is way over here. Probably wouldn't be able to make it back in time, so he's got to hope that the Logos fleet will be able to help defend enough just to survive until he can get help. 
Um, the Logos fleet is kind of shaky, not the strongest fleet, but they decided to go ahead and retreat it as well as the miner that was there so as not to lose it. Um, at the same time, I think he's going to have his Praxis fleet go ahead and advance in order to hopefully um, disturb Betty Crocker enough so that he stops messing around over here and starts dealing with this. Betty Crocker does have a battle fleet that he just constructed there. It has at least three DDs. Um, I made a mistake before when I said Betty Crocker, or not Betty Crocker, but Junior Research Scanning Technology. He has the first scanning, he doesn't have the second, so he's not going to be able to pick up on Betty Crocker's Raiders, but he did, he did get Minesweepers, and that's uh, just playing over a long period of time, I just forget little details like that. I know it's kind of a big detail. I just knew he did some sort of countermeasure, and I thought it was scanning, but no one has scanning too yet. And so Betty Crocker's Raiders are okay. They've all been, uh, Junior and Sonny have both been pretty strapped for cash, so they've mainly had to just focus their money on defensive measures and uh, building up their fleets so that they can fight back. I'm sorry, I forgot to note this. Uh, Betty Crocker did move his frontier fleet here, so it's Sonny's turn now. He's going to have to respond to that. I mean, he's going to have to move his his bringers of pain down to help defend the home world because the frontier fleet is right at his door. Um, what's he going to do with the bringers of sorrow or uh, bringers of fear? Did I say did I say bringers of pain? I don't know what he's going to do with his bringers of sorrow or, or bringers of pain yet. I have to uh, talk with him and decide. Betty Crocker pulled back his frontier fleet back to the warp point here. So now he's essentially threatening both this hex, this hex, and this hex. I guess not both, but all three hexes there. He did send one raider through here. I suppose that has to be revealed since it's a raider. Because um, it can go here and then just keep moving. Um, so that's what he did. He also brought a bunch of stuff here. He brought in things from over here. Um, he's kind of leaving this a little weaker, but it feels like since the Logos fleet has been knocked out of position, it's going to take Junior one turn and then another turn to even get to any of his territory, and then he would be able to build up, build back up next economic phase sequence. So now let's see what Junior does. If he presses forward with his Praxis fleet or not, I think he, well, there's this ship to deal with too. Junior's been granting a reprieve since uh, Betty Crocker moved his legendary raiders out of here and kind of withdrew. He withdrew his own forces. It's just kind of protecting. Got his colony back going here. Uh, kind of a rebuilding. Um, hopefully to get ready for when uh, Betty Crocker's attention turns back towards him. But it's going to be tough. Uh, he withdrew his Praxis fleet. He didn't want to fight here. The nebula is really hard on him. He doesn't have his... his uh, a rating that all his people get. Uh, well, he does, but every all all ratings go down to E, so it's it's not so great. Um, so kind of a, a tough position, but at least he's been granted more time. Uh, Sonny reacted to Betty Cracker's last move, kind of split the bringers of fear up along with the dreadnought that was there. Decided to leave the raider alone. He's done this game before. If he attacks the raider, the raider retreats here, and then. You know, he can chase it out, but uh, he feels like he needs all his forces for defense right now. Though it didn't quite go according to his plan, Betty Crocker has triggered three big strikes on three different colonies of Sonny. His ultimate plan was to, ideally, jump into here and take out the, the home base and eliminate Sonny entirely. Um, the positioning didn't quite work out for that. He wasn't quite sure he could take out the bringers of fear. But... Um, we can reveal what his frontier fleet is now. It's a couple of transports, and those are big because, um, I mean, there's more than transports there, but those are big because he can drop troops down to the ground, and his troops are better than everyone else's right now. Um, if, if the transports can survive two rounds uh, and just take out the colony via uh, ground combat. So... Defending that colony are a dreadnought and two two dis, uh, destroyers and a base. So he could pray it probably even he has a good chance of beating of winning just the the spaceship combat as well. He also triggered a fight here with a couple of a raider, uh, the legendary raiders and six scouts and then uh, four BBs. These are battleships. 
He's got a special bonus with those. Um, two Raiders and his flagship. Interestingly, uh, Sonny's flagship is there as well. So what does Sonny have uh, as defense? I'm, I'm going through this now because I'm not going to roll it all out for you. Although these are big fights, there's just so many happening right now. It, I think you would, I, uh, although you, I know you love rolling, watching me roll dice, and I, I think he'd probably actually put this in too. Um, I think that's probably too much die rolling. So Bringers of Sorrow have five Minesweepers, a Titan, and two Fighters. Bringers of Pain, Titan, two Fighters, and Bringers of Fear are two Dreadnoughts and four Destroyers. So I'm going to roll all this out, and I guess I'll, I'll let you know after I get done with each one just how it went out. So there you go. The legendary raiders did not fail Betty Crocker. Their uh, combat on Arcturus was, they didn't take any casualties and they destroyed everything. Um, part of that was the luck of the die, and part of it was because they're legendary. I think these raider group five is blessed. And raider group three really tried to join their ranks. It really wanted to get a level so that it could also be legendary, but it failed. The scouts did fine too, but they are still green. The Bringers of Pain fared far better for Sunny. Not only did they rout their enemies, they're down to one battleship, a flagship, which he would have liked to get rid of, and an elite group of raiders. Um, but he was able to make some levels. His flagship went up to veteran, and his, his one lone remaining fighter is now an elite fighter, which means he doesn't have to pay for it. That's really nice for him. He doesn't want to have to keep paying for things because he's running out of money. The Frontier Fleet was super successful. They um, got dispatched of even the base before they had to even drop troops. Um, not only that, but their destroyer group four became legendary in the process. So that's gonna be really nice for Betty Crocker. Now we're gonna do the ground combat. And I think I'll just roll this out since this is the first one we've done. Um, one note, the ground insects are not weaker. They don't have their hull decreased. Um, I don't think any sort of technologies or skills or anything come into play. It's just going to be a straight out shooting match. Um, so the grab, so Betty Crocker's got, going to have six shots before it's going to be in, infantry. And then um, Sonny's fellows are going to shoot first on that. So we'll start with the grab armor. It's got six against one. And that's going to be five or better. And it failed. Now we'll go ahead and do the Marines. The Marines are going to be, the first Marine actually is going to be seven against one because the grab armor can support. Um, so that's six or better. And that killed one of them. And then we'll go ahead and roll the others as a group. So that's going to be uh, six against one. The Marines have a different rating depending on if they are attacking or defending. Right now they're attacking, so they have their better rating. Six against one, five or better. They're going to get, um, four rolls here. I guess I could grab this guy. This is all the Marines. And that's not a very good roll. I'll roll the other one again. I'll just roll it here. They did terrible. Um, which, incidentally, in this combat, Betty Crocker also rolled terrible. So now all the infantry get a fire. And they're going to shoot at... I think they'll shoot at the Marines. One of them gets a bonus to its defense, I believe. I'm not sure. We'll just have them shoot at the one that doesn't get a bonus to the defense. Um, so it's going to be five against one, one, so that's four or better. No hits there. Three more shots. One hit there, so a Marine died. Oh, no, no, it just got a hit because Marines have a greater hull. Even the people have hulls, or the insects in this case have hulls. So we'll put a damage marker there. And now Betty Crocker's infantry gets to go five against one. That's four or better. They did a little better than the Marines on that. One more roll for them, and then we'll restart a new round. That's two more hits. So we can see where this is going. I'm not sure if there's a fleet size bonus in this or not, uh, but I'm not going to worry about it. Six against one, that's five or better for the grab armor. Nope. Marines get a shoot. Well, we'll do the special one first. Seven against one, that's six or better. That did it. 
Then we'll do the non-special marines. And yeah, I wish I had that other die. Six against one that's five or better. And that's going to take out the remainder there. And Betty Crocker's capture the planet. I believe what that means is that, I mean, I'm sure he's not going to keep this. And I think this goes down to three, colony strength three. And it's now Betty Crocker's colony. Quick note, I made an error. Uh, there should have been militia also defending the planet, so I went ahead and rolled that out. It, it resulted in more casualties on Betty Crocker's side. He lost a couple Marines in the bargain. But that was about it. He, he managed to make short work of those guys as well. Sonny felt like he just had to sit on his turn. He wanted to counterattack, especially here. He thought these guys were vulnerable. Uh, but the problem with going there is that, you know, if he doesn't get first turn, next turn, that's going to leave his colonies vulnerable, and he wants to keep what he has. He couldn't bring the bringers of fear out because uh, these people could come to this colony here. So he's kind of stuck. Um, I guess he could bring the bringers of fear up and then build. Maybe that's what he'll do. He doesn't necessarily want to attack here, though. The frontier fleet isn't that tough. Really, he could attack there. Destroyer, some elite or legendary destroyers, and a raider. Hmm. And the bringers of fear are some dreadnoughts. And... Yeah, that's tough. I think he might just sit on it. Does he have a shipyard here? I don't think he does. Oh, he does. So he could build some ship there to help defend it. But he feels like things are crumbling. It's really hard for Sunny. I'll have to think about that, and we'll find out what he does next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament for Alti Lake 5 Space Empires 4X.